Hello and welcome to game number two of the Reverse Captain's Mode Tournament, the ATO D3. We are going to be having ourselves a game between mouse ports and typical mistakes with not having Cinderin in because he had internet issues, so we had to find a stand in, or at least mouse ports had to find a stand in. It is Blister that stands in for him and for the draft, and probably not for more than the draft, and maybe even not the entire draft. I will be having a co caster, a Conoclast. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being there, even though you have a game in like 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Because you are, of course, in the other semi-finals, so uh, you can help us shine some light in the situation. You bad. Yeah. Hopefully. Well. So we see basically Meepo and Medusa being banned every single time. Yeah, it's heroes you don't want to. You don't want to play. Like you ban what you don't want to play, and like unless you have a really good Meepo, even if you have a really good Meepo on your team, it's hard to fit him in because well, it's easy to kill. Yeah. So. Now what are what? Because. Um, what do you think about a team drafting Ten Invoker for another team? Because that's what Empire did to Mouseports at some point. They, did. Five oh. seconds. they gave Five Mouseports seconds an Invoker, yes. Well, I don't know really, like, <laughs> Invoker is such a good hero, he can do a lot by himself, but... I don't know, I don't think it's worth it, I think he does too much by himself. Like, if you go cause Wex, you can just roll over anything, the same with, like, Quas X, sort of, honestly. Like, yeah, they still really? lost that game, by the way, Mouseports did. Oh, wow. Even uh, they, they got a Witch Doctor as well, so they got some stuns, because it's yeah. uh, a lot about stuns. And, and what kind of trend that we've seen lately is that the teams try to make sure that they drafted all the requirements for the draft already in the first three. Yeah. That's because it's so you can't, like, so if they haven't drafted something for you, like let's say they haven't drafted a ranged for you, or something you can ban out the th you have three bans that bans out range you don't want Ten so they have to pick remaining. like a ranged hero that you have banned out like three ranged heroes and Five one of those like you th you, they're gonna have to pick something that you don't really want to give you and that's why you try to get the three Reserve first time. like the requirements and we're gonna be seeing an OD again again on the set of mouse board Cinderin wasn't really too great with that in the previous game Cinder <laughs> uh, or OD is one of those heroes that needs a good start otherwise yeah yeah. Well, honestly, like I don't see why would anyone would give OD over to a team. I think uh, like OD is a really underrated mid hero. He wins probably like 80% of mid matchups, or maybe not in competitive, but at least in like public games. So you can see these as kind of public games. Mm -hmm. Like you're not gonna see any like Magnus mid destroying OD or something. I think I think he's really good mid. So I was disappointed to see that Mouse put him as a support last game. Yeah, especially since at the start of the game, Fada did pick up the OD. Yeah. But then they swapped at some point, the main people that they are. Yeah. Phantom Assassin, first pick up that Mose does for uh, typical mistakes. Of course, we've seen her a lot, basically almost any, almost every game. She's been yeah. played as an offlaner quite convincingly. Another range, it's two range on the board, but... That's, that's, that's so yeah. agi though. Yeah, that's the second agility, so one of the attributes will still be in the pool, that means indeed that typical mistakes can ban out the attributes heroes of the one that they still have to get that they don't want to have. Yeah. I don't know, I think, like, why why would you give over clinks? There's other ranged heroes you can give. Like, like uh, yeah, Huskar, definitely the Huskar. Well, they I mean, gave Huskar, Huskar in the previous game, though. Seconds. Yeah, but he wasn't, he wasn't the reason for why they won. True. The reason was the bot lane, Five like AA, um, that lane down there. I'm gonna but that's what I mean, like, like, <laughs> the <laughs> typical mistakes, they didn't have like a good try lane by any accounts, but it was just that Mouse had much worse heroes for that lane, so they just rolled over them completely. That's what you do, can do in ATO. We have seen a Klinks earlier in the ATO OGD already. He owned. He owned <laughs> hard. Yeah. yeah, it's possible, I mean, he's such a strong solo hero. I think, like, Klinks is one of the f heroes that if you give him the easy lane against an offlaner, He'll win against like he'll win against like, most of the heroes, except for I mean the obvious Maybe strong ones like Sula Bear and such. But we won't see them here. Nope. Well, especially since typical mistakes can pick what they are going to be up against. Yeah. They can just make sure they're going to be squ having squishy heroes, even though they just pick up the Lycan. Yeah. I have to say that's not really a squishy hero, not too much <laughs> anyway. Like I don't know, I th I feel though as Lycan is a really strong hero in the right hands. Like I I know like LGD was a fan of picking it actually in their drafts. Like use it for pushing or something, and I think like Lycan has such a strong push. Leave him alone in the forest, and he's gonna do so much. Like this wasn't possible in the last game because they got so destroyed on like all the lanes, so didn't get any space to do anything. 
But if yeah. you give him space, he's gonna he's gonna tear you apart. He was already on the right path until he, he was forced to join Ten his team. Yeah. Anti oh, that's good. Oh wow. Well. So they have to pick like this is one of the scenarios I'm talking about. Mouse ports have to, or I mean mouse ports. Uh. Oh, oh boy, okay, I lost it. What? <laughs> Uh, like they have to give mouse ports an a uh, ranged hero now. Yes. So they can ban out like all mouse ports can ban out all the ranged heroes they don't want, such as like Krob Krobolos, uh Necrolite, Morphling, or Husker even. They can get a good ranged hero. Oh, Necrolite's uh, is just picked up, so. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, Husker for example, indeed, you don't want to be given Husker if your opponent already has Necrolite. Yeah. Because Necrolite's already countered towards that Husker, so we're probably gonna yeah. see him bend out. On the other side, typical mistakes still need to have a a ranged for or nice sorry a, a strength for their draft. Yeah, but I don't know. It feels I don't know. Ban Spectre feels kind of weird. I guess. Well, it's Amelia G, I guess. Yeah. They well, they already <coughs> have agility heroes. I guess that they don't want more. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, are they okay with any strength hero? Because can you really be okay with any strength hero? Uh, not really. I mean, there are a few, but <laughs> they, they can do anything. I mean, all everything is possible in ATOD, I guess. What would you think about Mouseport still giving the Huskar two typical mistakes? Ten seconds. I it could work. I mean, why are they banning Trow though? I don't understand these bans at all, honestly. Well, they still need a ranged up against their hero, so they don't want to be having a Drow. But I don't think they would have been getting a Drow. No, I mean, getting I a Drow is pretty nice. I think draw is actually like really strong. I yeah. mean, we had it like last. I don't know. Did you watch that game when we had it against the team? I can't remember I, what I the team so. was. I think I cast it every yeah. ATOD game. We, so we just we just put a trial in with draw, and you just like you had the frost arrows. You could harass everyone. So you're, like superior range and slow. Yeah, it's yeah. If she gets <laughs> she gets a decent start, she doesn't even have to have yeah. a decent start. If she doesn't oh, get seconds, crushed before level six, she's gonna yeah. crush you. Yeah. Five seconds remaining. <clears throat> the mouse don't want to risk it. They probably just already want to have the anti-mage to farm, because basically yeah. Black's saying, you know what, yeah. I'm going to be playing the anti-mage, so I don't want anything that could replace that. Yeah, mouse yeah it's kind of ballsy giving him anti-mage, actually. Like, he's probably like one of the best anti-mage players in the American and EU scene, I guess. Yep. But really. the, the question is, is he going to be getting the freedom to actually get the farm up? Because, yeah. of course, that's going to be one of the main issues. Mm -hmm. And that's, the, like, this... The, I, I can already see like an offensive trialing coming out from typical mistakes with like Phantom Assassin, Necrolite and plus one. Doesn't like we have Clinks put solo bottom or solo mid even. Like PA and Necrolite are two pretty like decent heroes on their own, so and we'll see. Husker are still banned out though. And Invoker yeah. are still banned out. Mouseports have got a I, I said Mouseports was the one that actually got the Invoker that time. Yeah. I wouldn't say it was bad either, but apparently they don't want it again. Maybe they want to just make sure that this time the OD is going to be mid. And don't want to be any other mid hero. And of course they yeah. know that they still are getting a ranged. So, yeah. And Bloodseeker, yeah. I mean, you don't want Bloodseeker. <laughs> you don't want Bloodseeker. He was actually in the first banning phase in the previous game. Yeah. I mean, we try. I know we tried to give him away or ban him. Like, if we have... Because he's such a horrible hero. <laughs> but, like, straight up. No disables. Ah. No. I mean, he does decent in the lane. Like, if you get, give him mid lane, he can do decent, but still, he's a hard hero to use. No. Ursa ban. No ranged, surprisingly. Mm hmm. Well, let's see so what typical good. mistake I have in mind for them. Yeah. It's difficult if, difficult if you don't have the hero board in front of you in this yeah. game mode because you kind of want to pick, the, well, this, want to see the forgotten heroes. Yeah, basically. exactly. <clears throat> so which Still. range do you think is one of the ones that we should watch out for? I don't know, like, remaining. there's still Krobolus and Huskar, I guess, or not Huskar, Krobolus. It's probably Five one that uh, they're gonna give mouse ports. So they have to give mouse ports a ranged hero for the last one. Yeah. So, let's see. Let's see, indeed. Strength heroes is what mouse ports still need to pick up for typical mistakes. Yeah. And out of the phases, Void is on mouse ports. One of the two is not going to be getting the farm. Or do you yeah, think they're, they're going to gonna... play? No, they're probably going to play faces for the support. Or maybe have anti mage safe laning solo and aggressive tri laning faces void. 
my hops. Five my seconds. Hops. Guess mm -hmm. what their last pick is, and you can't really aggressive try lane if you're gonna be expecting Lycan to be in the jungle, of course. Oh. Yeah. Taking their time for their last strength hero. Silver Wisp in yeah. the pool. I mean, they can yeah. use this to, ba to ban Trolling. out a, a hero that they don't want to be getting. Oh, it probably won't Five be get, giving a wisp out. Like, that hero is super strong. We have seen a wisp. Empire gave oh, away wow. a wisp. Wow. Did they lose? Did they yes, win? Yes, they lost. Yeah. Because they surprised. also gave away an Ursa. They gave Ursa a wisp. Actually, that wasn't that. No, that wasn't Empire. My bad. That was uh, oh. that was PGG's team. Well, yeah, giving away Ursa and Wisp seems really strange. I've, I've been told that he was drunk and he was singing on Skype, so the game <laughs> was also ended very, very yeah, quickly. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be surprised. No way, PGG. It looks like um, we are not going to be going to your game, by the way. The votes that have been entered so far, it's not that many, but it's still going to be going the way of stay in this oh. game. <laughs> But uh, Kunka is the one that they get, the strength hero. And there's the last uh, ranged, it is a razor. Yeah. To pick. Hmm. I think they'll do Outworld Destroy mid this time, honestly. It's like either you play Outworld, either you play OD against a Necrolite, which you'd completely destroy because Necrolite's an int hero, or you play it against Klinks, which you're still gonna win because he has like zero intelligence. You can kill him at level 6. Yeah. Have you seen Razor before remaining. as support? No. What are you saying? Face is void support. Five seconds. <laughs> it would like a terrible support. Two seconds left. One. Oh my god. Reserve time. Alright. Viper. Viper. Right? Oh. I kinda like Viper. I think Viper is a good hero. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Oh, I mean, you have got a, your orb effect. I mean, look look at the trial lane they can do. They can do Kanka mid, Clinks. Bottom, Necrolite, Phantom Assassin, Viper top. The admin says, Dear Co-Caster, other game will start soon. Oh god, I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go, guys. Yeah, thank you for being here for the short oh. period of time. Ooh, wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's fun watching that. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, hopefully it'll be a fun game. I hope so, so too. good luck with that. Good luck, and when this game is over, when these games are over, I'm gonna be jumping in there with the Dota TV ticket that I have, so. <laughs> alright, alright. Okay. Well, see you later. Leaders, good luck. As that was, of course, uh, Iconoclast who's in 4FC and who's in the other semi-finals. And that's this one I have to remove. There we go. And uh, we are staying because that was a vote that was called for. Stay was 61%, 39%, 4, go. Um, so we are staying because that got the upper hand. We're going to be seeing mouse sports in this game on the dire side with on the radiant side. Uh, Typical mistakes. Back. This is game number two. Game number one was, of course, won by typical mistakes. Most ports getting into a bad place real fast with no hope of getting out anymore. So they ended it really quickly. They also we also had a couple of long pauses uh, because Syndrome's internet wasn't really working as it should be, and that is also why we see that we have a stand-in for this game. It is going to be Blister that is going to be the stand-in, and we're going to be seeing him playing a Faceless Void, as he is indeed going to be the support Faceless Void. Koikfa actually is going to be up on the Anti-Mage. We're going to be seeing Pass on a Lycanthrope, and it is going to be Black on the OD, and that will mean in the mid lane we'll have Fada on the Razor, so Razor solo mid. Pass probably in the jungle once again. Blister gonna be supporting. We'll be trying to do something top, but Black is gonna be farming on that OD, and I think maybe they're gonna be even leaving the bottom lane entirely open. Support anti mage. Okay. On the other side, we are gonna be seeing I'm a Sheep Sucks, gonna be playing a supporty Viper. Pretty decent support. I like kinda like Viper, especially in the lane because of that because of that orb attack. I mean that is just so damn strong. And it can go can go really in their favor if they get some some early game uh, harassment going and just make sure that mouse is the not going to be getting any farm. Games. We're going to be seeing fan of Seon playing the uh, Phantom Assassin this game. Going to be going on the um, on the aggressive trial lane which they're going to be having here. And the last one that is going to be there is the Klink. So it's going to be a semi-supporting Klink. He is a delayed mind who is the stand-in for this game. As we saw him in the previous game as well. Uh, we have got in the mid lane again. Uh, it is the same person that we saw earlier on the Husker. It is uh, Rai Buros. He is going to be playing the Kunka this game. Up against the Razor. Not really the easiest job in the world. But should be okay. Probably. Mostly. Because there's no disable that's going to be coming for him. Until. <laughs> until. 
the support phase is void is level six, so he could have a chronosphere. That's the is the only only real disable that they have. Oh, the late at mind is in trouble. And I actually picked the fire arrows first. They're gonna be able to go for the phase of void though. There is the harassment, but the jump over. It's gonna be saving his life. I mean, one thing that mouse pros do have has does have are those escapes. Blinks. Time lapses. Time walks, that is. The wolf form. Another great escape. That's great. We're gonna be having Cakes playing the Necrolite this game. That was the last one that I didn't introduce yet. It's gonna be solo up against Quake Fry. Gonna be okay with that. And gonna be also, therefore, gonna be getting that farm. And gonna be that tanky Necrolite that people will so fear if he is picked up in a competitive match. Because you kinda need to shut him down. In the meantime, Viper might be in a bit of trouble because the creep wave with him. There goes <laughs> Astro Imprisonment. Bit of a miscommunication there. It's a slow, of course, of the Astro of the uh, time walk didn't go through. Because, you know, that just didn't happen. And it will be a uh, sheep that will be continuing here and just face. able to harass Black without getting harassed by the creeps because Orb Effects. Yay, win. Cost him a lot of mana though. And he only has one more clarity. And this is more Orb Effects, by the way. Just saying. This is harassment galore. And we're gonna see Black having a tough time trying to get any hand in farming right here as we have got I'm a sheep trying to do something against the pool here. But this pool will eventually push out the lane because it's only one stack and he won't allow it to go any further than Dive. that. And they're actually gonna be diving this a bit. Pushing the tower as they go. Taking the neutrals. Why not? And mouse ports. Not really getting anything on this uh, on this top lane right here. In the meantime, on the bottom lane, it is gonna be Koifra that's gonna be getting the first blood. Cakes is gonna be going down. And he does it again. Well, last time he didn't get the first blood, but he did do a good job on that solo, solo, solo suicide lane. He's level four right now, seven last hits. He's not the best in the world. His um, opponent is having seven last hits, so you know it's fairly even. But with that first blood money, this is an anti mage that could get very much out of control. In the meantime, 10 for 3 from the Phantom Assassin, but highest is in the mid lane still for both. It is gonna be Fada on that Razor that is 13 for 2 with a Hatred in his pocket. And it's gonna be Kunka that is level, well, that is 15 for 1, and he's level 4. He's gonna get drained from almost attack power. And Fada, thinking about diving this with that Hatred, might be able to do something here. A couple of hits needed, and he will be able to get the kill. One more last hit needed. He is gonna be diving this. Bottle charge is being used, and that is gonna be Fada not getting the kill. Might still be able to do something with the bottle charge of himself if he's gonna dive this again. And he actually is. Oh, he will get that kill. One more hit. There we go. But he dies for it. Downside. Killed by the Radiant. Yeah, that's right. That kind of means that there's no gold, no experience going away of the Kunkka, unfortunately for him. But kill is a kill, I guess, in a way. And that's still gonna be a bit of a downside for Fala for dying there. But he is gonna be getting a fast TP with that. I mean, he spent all his gold, gets his TP, and is already back in the mid lane. Up against Kunkka. And he, of course, did get the experience and the gold from that kill. He is level 5 right now, while Kunkka is only level uh, level 4 still. Four and a half, but still four. In the meantime, on the top lane, the aggression is not really there anymore. At least it is there, but at this point, Mouse Sports knows okay, you know what? We can't really do anything on this top lane, so why not just leave it be? And uh, gonna be. Uh, Gonna be trying to get as much as possible without really putting themselves at danger. We do see Black uh, being a bit overextending, but uh, so far Viper is not really around as we are going to be seeing Fada going down if he gets one more hit, but it's Melee Heroes. Suck! The torrent is there. Is it going to be on par? Per on par? It's going to be on point. On point. It was on point. It was on point. There we go. Kunka gets a kill. Where is the Viper? Wow. This is one sad faces void. But he gets bashes. I guess it's not that sad. Viper rotated bottom actually to help out the uh, Necrolite to make sure Anti-Mage doesn't get too far ahead. 17 last hits, Ring of Health. This is an Anti-Mage that is so, so dangerous. Look at that net worth. He is the suicide laner. Again, same as last time. He could turn this all around. Really depends on what the rest of Mouse is doing with their lane, so. As uh, we do have the face void walking all the back, way the back home, all the way back home. Horned. Heading up on Fara. Level 6 up on the Kunkka. Has got boats. Doesn't have mana. Does have illusion. He's gonna be forced to use it soon. There we go. To get his HP back up with the bottle. But this is, uh, this is still a lane where anything can happen. Even though 
Fada got a kill up on uh, Boris, and Boris got a kill up on Fada. It's it's like I said. I mean, I just said both, so it's fairly even. Twenty-two for three versus twenty-five for two, twenty-six. Black feeling pretty confident here, knowing that he is up against two heroes with the basically no more mana left. Knowing that he is safe, but also Viper not being there. Viper being there with Koifa. Koifa who's gonna be uh, forced to blink himself away soon, or just walk himself away. You know. Doesn't really want to waste mana on something that he's not gonna be uh not gonna be dying for regardless. Maybe gonna be able to get some last hits, even though attack. she gets it instead. And of course for people that join later, this is the reverse captain's mode. Semi-finals between mouse ports and tactical mistakes. Is this game two? Game one is taken by tactical mistakes. We're gonna be seeing if mouse ports can force out a game number three or if tactical mistakes is gonna be taking a 2-0. As Phantom Assassin goes down, is this is Black getting himself a kill with his ulti, waiting patiently until he can throw it out, and getting himself a kill on the ki on the one person that's actually farming on that top lane. Phantom Assassin goes down. Nicely done on what was supposed to be an aggressive trial lane. Really nicely done, even. They make it a really, that's ex extra good. Extra good indeed. Extra good indeed. Dyer's top tower is under attack. It's not as aggressive as a game as we saw previously, but that's also because we don't really have that many heroes that when level 6 are going to be totally owning the place. Viper might have been one of those, but he is a supporter. He is level 3, he's not really going to be able to do anything at any time. At any point, for now. So the heroes that Tactical Mistakes have chosen to be their aggressive heroes need time. Kunka needs time, needs items. PA needs items, Necrolite needs items, needs to be tanky. At the same time, Mouse Sports is happy the way things are going. They're ha they're having Koifa with with a lot of farm. They know that he is uh, probably ahead of most, especially because of that first blood. And uh, they have their black not farming as well, but he's getting experience and levels, and they're banking stuff on the anti mage anyway. So you know, as long as they're making sure that the opponents are not getting that much, it's okay. And more importantly, they've got, of course, still Lycanthrope farming in the jungle, so so far they're holding off their lanes while being four on five. Black in some trouble, but he should be able to stay alive unless he's gonna be jumping there. Here comes Basher guy. Let's see if he can get lucky this time as well. The jump was there, but actually, that's gonna be kill. One more hit, one more hit. No stick charges helping out! And that is gonna be Pass coming in, and it's gonna be a neutral kill going the way of the neutrals. It is gonna be the clings that goes down by the shockwave of the satire, but it does give Zoe on the time to get himself away. Unless he tries to jump him still. Needs to get that vision, doesn't have the mana though. Four stick charges are there, but do you really want to risk your own life for that? With the possible bashes going on. I think he does actually, I think he does. Stick charges could be the way out. Nah, this is a kill. No, it's not a kill. Maybe to kill upon Blister, here comes the other guy, and that is gonna be Black! There he goes, it was about time, I have to say. With the other guy, it was of course Soyon. Time walk away, Blister, trouble. Here comes a Torrent, gonna be not hitting though, only on Creep, but the- Oh, the Tidebringer! That Tidebringer level 4 does it when the face is Void is level 4 and the Kunkka is level 8, yeah. That's kind of painful. They found Pass as well as uh, there's gonna be Viper that goes down on the bottom lane. We're gonna be seeing if this goes uh, into a gank though, as the fight just ended in the bottom lane anyway with Necrolite going down. Quick by getting himself a kill, so 2-4-0. Torrent is gonna miss. Here comes Delated Mind. Gonna be going for Pass. X marks spot helping out only level 1, I believe. But does the job for them, and that is gonna be tactical mistakes, getting themselves a bit of a well, a bit of space to uh, to get this game going, especially since their bottom lane is really, really not going well. Anti mage two for zero for one, doing well on the net worth. It's actually eight hundred gold ahead of the highest of of tactical mistakes. Tower, of course, helping out with that as well as the kills. But still a pretty tough uh, job as the Laser Mind is having some issues with some wolves, but yeah, it's gonna be okay. He just probably has to go back to base. Soyon? Some trouble, maybe? Unseen. Nah, it's gonna be just fine. Blister actually goes for the invisibility rune. When he is level 6, we might see some more action on the map than we see right now. We have got the gold grab going the way of mouse ports purely for anti-mages. Way. Things are going. I don't. My English is really sucky today, isn't it? It's because I haven't casted for a while. That's my excuse. 
Oh, he's dead. Bana coming bottom once again, getting himself the third kill of the game. He's now 3 2 1 with 41 last hits, and is actually now second highest up on the net worth, close behind Koikfa, and that is. That, that's trouble. Tactical mistakes. They, they have a lineup that can do damage later on. But imagine most sports team later on. I mean, like I already said, they're winning 4 on 5 right now or getting ahead 4 on 5. They will have pass soon also with the Vlads, maybe with an Aegis, maybe starting to split push a bit. And then they'll have an anti mage that's pretty damn fun. And also, if the game does last long enough, that Faceless Void will not be a support Faceless Void anymore. He will try to get some items up and he will be a very, very dangerous Faceless Void. As he's actually been given the space in the mid lane. Fada coming in though to try and help kill off Kunka. Here they go. Dragging his attack damage away from him. He is going to be landing a Torn, but he's going to miss it. And that is going to be Fada in some trouble. Going to be X marked the spot. Will be brought down by the tower not attacking him anymore. And this might actually be Kunka staying alive. And that is going to be the Reaper side from... The Necrolite Cakes is getting the kill, and it will also be a kill for Delated Mind. One more hit. Oh, what? What did he do? That looked a bit awkward. That should have been a kill. <coughs> that should have been a kill. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Oh, well. Mistakes happen. It's a pretty painful mistake, though, as Fada has been doing really well since the times that he died mid. He has been doing really well. Antimage though, doing better. Way better. Ghost Perseverance ready. Battle Fury is gonna be on the way. He doesn't even need to adjust his item build because Radiant's it is an ATOD, is which attack. is something that we saw with previous Antimages that we saw, because we did see Antimages before. As uh, we, for, a former mana needed Radiant's for him to get away. He should be able to. Yeah, attack. there we go. But, um. But yeah, this Antimage not even needed to, to change his item build because he's just doing that good. Generation. He is just doing that that good and he's just that comfortable in the way this game is going. Kling's level 6. Viper level 5. We'll be having that slow, of course. They're gonna be going mid, but looks a bit. Kunka at least is. X marks the spot. Torn. Gonna be hitting there as well. Here comes the rest. They're gonna be going for Fada, and Fada will indeed go down there and goes. Kling's picking up a kill. Here comes Pasto, the first time that he actually showed himself. Gonna be going for the Phantom Assassin, and Phantom Assassin uses stick charge to try and stay alive, but I don't think it's gonna be enough, depending on how well they're gonna be helping that the boat helps actually, and Pasto runs himself away. Gonna not get slowed, because slow is something that Lycanthrop does not do in, in his wolf form. He gets himself out of wolf form, and this might actually be overextension. Pass is gonna be going down. Five heroes for tactical mistakes used to get that kill, but a worthy at that because that was, like I said, the first time that Lycanthrop like jumped himself out of the jungle. Well, the, uh, he, well, he died. It wasn't the first time that he died. Of course, they jumped him on the bottom of the, well, in the jungle, of course, as well, but doing a really good j job shutting him down now again as Cakes doesn't get the kill up on Blister. Will be uh, taking a lot of damage here from Fada, but Fada gets slowed. Here comes the orb effects, and that, sh that should actually be Fada going down. He still takes Cakes with him, but he will be going down. One more hit away from dying. There we go. There we go. Viper getting the kill. In the meantime, on the bottom lane, it is Quick in some trouble. It is Soyon that's gonna go for him, but the blink away is there, so he won't be able to follow that one. And that is actually the first time that we see Antimage under a slight amount of pressure. But he did get the tower. Getting denied, still, tower goes down, bit of gold going towards your team. Very important, especially for your semi support -ish heroes, because they need that gold. They're not going to get that gold from farming, because the reason why you choose that you're not going to be getting a phases void to be anything else but a support is because you want to give the farm up to your carries. Black. Going to be harassing Kunka a bit, won't be able to get him down though. And the later mine will be coming back mid. As Fada is continuing his farm. See the gold graph still going the way of mouse boards. That anti-mage. That anti-mage is really doing the works. It is 4k experience in their favor with... 4k experience in their favor with being a kill down. That is something to note. And that is gonna be that lycanthrope. Being the difference. Making the difference. Look at that level difference. We have three heroes level Radiant's 10 or higher on the side of mouse boards. Well, Radiant's there is only one level 10 upon attack. tactical mistakes. In the meantime, the tower gets denied in the middle lane. We have Black in some trouble. Gonna get a Viper Strike there. Gonna be trying to TP himself out. That's the one thing that you can do against a Viper. He won't be able to stop you. Kunka wasn't there. And uh, that is just a safe TP. 
And the one thing that you can always do if you run into a solo viper also in pubs, of course, as uh, we're gonna be seeing Kunka coming in. X-Mark Spot will be there if he wants to, and he does want to. Tord is gonna be there as well, the boat's gonna fly in as well. Fada is in trouble, Fada going down! Killing spree for the Kunka with the double damage rune, and that is a kill they still desperately needed because look at the experience now. Look at the experience now, the graph is going back towards that zero line, of course Lycan is still making a big difference, but still, by the way, Lycan is indeed killing off Roshan, that was the bashing sounds that you heard, Chronosphere, hello Kunke, I think Kunke goes down here, there we go, actually Eclipse being used for that, that's gonna be Cakes in some trouble, it's gonna be Blister that's able to jump himself out, it's gonna be Black that goes down, Cakes in safety, Reaper Scythe, saving his life, TP out from the faceless void, well plus has got Roshan about down, He's very, very low, but he will be able to get it, unless he gets bashed, which he doesn't. There goes the Aegis. And that is gonna be Fana going for Cakes, but getting counter ganked. Meantime, it was the Phantom Assassin that goes down in the bottom lane for dive diving a bit too deep. And Fada staying alive. But yeah, Phantom Assassin died here. <laughs> Slightly out of reach of uh, Koikpa, who is gonna, just going to be going back to farming. He has got his Battle Fury, so he will be going for that flash farming. He has also got the treads. He is gonna be, he is gonna be farming so fast. Time for the anti fun to start. Tactical mistakes now on a time limit, unless they can get their carries up to speed. But that's gonna be a tough job. Look at that net worth difference. They don't have any towers down yet. Well, they have got. All, mi all tier 1 towers on their own side down. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And and that's trouble. That that just is trouble as we have a boat coming in. Nice 4 staff. Black seeing himself alive for that one. But oh, for how long? Because they're still going to go in. He is still going to go down. Doesn't get the kill in return for the Kunkals. Also, of course, that boat aura helping out a lot. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And that's going to be more TPs incoming mid. Got that on an illusion static link. Clings. Maybe trying to do something here. I don't think they can though. Surprisingly, nobody really has uh, any protection at all. But this looks like Mouseport's just ready to, to push, especially with that Lycan being there, with that Aegis. They can push. So why not? Why not try? Why not try to force something out there? Realize that Blister is there. Because, of course, of the later mind being there. Chronosphere catches both of them, though, and that's gonna be Klings being drained of all his mana. It is gonna be a Viper Strike up on Fada, but the end is already there for Klings. Blister able to jump himself away. Cakes is gonna be in trouble as well as a Viper. Viper going down first. Mechanism helping out Cakes for now. X marks the spot, gonna be helping out as well with the jumping pass down, but the Wolves are still on the chase, and they will still get the kill. Should still get the kill. Will not get that kill. He is gonna be safe. Who is next? Soyon, trouble, torrent, missing, pass. He's now gonna be the one to get slowed and killed. But he had the ages, and this is gonna be Soyon getting attacked by wolves. Torrent helping out. Pass being back up. Hello, Koikfa, welcome to the party. Has got that mana break. Will help out to almost kill off the Kunka, but not enough mana missing. And that is gonna be X Mark Spark again upon pass. I'm not sure if they can do this though. I'm not sure if they really should try because this is trouble. They don't lose their tier 2 middle. They don't lose anything apart from hero lives. So in a way it wasn't that bad. They could have done way worse. And they got the ages as well, which is pretty nice. But that's not a fight that they want to be taking at that point. And they realized that as well, so they backed out. But still mouse in favor. They are determining when, where, how, and what, and who. They are in control. Black on the top lane still happily farming. X marks spot's gonna be there. Is there gonna be a torrent? No, there is not. There is gonna be Torrent, and that's gonna be Black going down. Boom, he's dead. TA, yeah, getting those crits when you most need them. Very important. Rage buyback. No, not Rage. They just wanna see if they can get a kill on the Clinks. Again, no vision though. No way of spotting him. No way of realizing where he is. Even the support phases Void, who's going for a mechanism, doesn't have that. How often do you play support phases Void, I guess, then, right? And I guess they don't really have to fear that much about a Klings. I mean, it's just a support, right? But that vision that he gives by doing this is pretty valuable. Of course, we saw it just working uh, not really in their favor. The Cronus raid on two and, you know, didn't really go as intended. But that vision that they get for free, pretty damn nice. Tier 1 tower, gonna go down. Second one to go down on the side of Mouseports as Kunka picks up the gold. Has his Shadow Blade ready. 
in the mid though is Mouseports once again laying down the pressure. Gonna be having three heroes here. Looks like they might be trying to go for Koikva first, but there's three heroes standing right behind him. Here comes Akunka. Needs one. Needs needs one light type bringer. Go for type bringer. Shadow Blade ran out actually on him. There goes the Eclipse. That was Viper already going down. Later Mine's gonna be next. And Cakes in a lot of trouble. Uses mechanism. Looks like Akunka waited too long. And there's even a Chronosphere for Cakes. They don't have to deal with the Kunka because Kunka was too far back, couldn't do anything, couldn't get the momentum going, and they're gonna be losing their tier one. Torrent and boat are still gonna be coming in. Even if there if there is a boat, there's actually no mana for a boat right now. Ooh, almost kills up Koika with that, but not enough. Not enough just yet. Fortification is gonna force them out. But for how long? Tower will still go down. Black taking the gold. Getting a crit <laughs> from Soyon. Still being able to stay alive though. Uh, yeah, I mean, they get everybody of mouse parts really low. I mean, look at that top bar alone. This is really, you know, really everybody low apart maybe from Fada, but they don't get anything with it. They only lose their tier 3, lost their hero lives, apart from the Kunka and the, and the TA, of PA rather. Not really that great. Is he really still chasing? Yes, he is. Okay. Let's see if he can get this. Be eating a creep. Hmm. Let's see if he can get this. I don't think he can. Not with the difference. Level 10, level 13? Maybe he can actually. We'll see. Oh, four staff. Gonna be laying a bit for the star TP out. Not nah, kill. My heart no longer beats. Send you down. If you don't try to fight back, you get that one. So that's gonna be uh, a nice kill for the latest mind. Something that he really needed. If he wants to be a bit of a carry later on, he needs to get that farm up. And as you can see on that worth, his farm isn't really that great. I mean, yes, he, I know he's playing playing as support, but the difference is pretty big. He is second lowest on the graph. Torrent, boat, pass, trouble. Here comes the, the oh, static link though. That's gonna be burning away a lot of damage. They still got the kill on boss, but they have to run away from Fada because he is getting bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger. And they are gonna be trying to go for someone, but they don't have detection. The Shadow Blade is there, and there is no way they're gonna be fighting that if they don't have any detection, which they still. Ah, sentry boards. Lister has them. I was gonna say, which they still don't have. I stand corrected. This is gonna be a bit bad for uh, for him, for the sheep. He's gonna be getting uh, killed off. No real support, surprise. Torrent coming in, hitting up on two. Actually, Sentry Ward is already there. And there goes Koifa, still going down though, as well as the Faceless Void inside of his Chrono. They find Fada. Fada is gonna be picked off here, and that's four dead. Four dead on the side of Mouse Force with only one Viper to give as sacrifice. Great fight for tactical mistakes, and we—I basically feel that we've got like fights, 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 fights. I don't feel like I have that much time to talk about what people actually are buying, so let's just take a look at that first before we do anything else. You can already see uh, for yourself of everybody, in case you have any special interest in a certain hero. It is going to be the Kunko who's going for the traditional build, of course, Shadow Blade, Crystalis, Deadless. And uh, maybe he wants to go for BKB at some point, though the Chronosphere and the Static Link goes through that, so I'm not quite sure how important that is for him. Uh, rather than just going for damage items, which of course can be the one as well. Cakes, we're going for a tanky build, we already got the mechanism and the drums and the treads, of course. We might see him building a Vanguard or a pipe. Might be a bit late for Vanguard, but those tanky kind of items are the ones that we normally see. If he is going to be getting more farm than anybody else, he might think about getting a Sheepsick, because as we know in these kind of games, Disables are pretty hard to come by, so disable, purchasable disable is uh, gonna be very nice. We have a basher up on the PA who's getting some nice farm indeed there, so he is doing quite okay for himself next to uh, the treads and the point booster, which is pretty much casual for now. But I'm kind of curious to see what he thinks about getting with it. Because, you know, getting yourself a, a Scotty is not even that bad on the hero. Uh, they need to be going uh, top though, because that's where they'll get pushed in. 
Uh, let's see, who else do we have? Viper, supporty. We already saw the supporty heroes. And that's everybody on the Radiant side. And before we continue on, I think we're gonna be seeing a fight first. Because uh, this is looking like trouble. Mouse Sports wants to come in. And they're gonna be finding the Kunkka first. There is already a Tidebringer helping out, clearing the creep wave a bit. And they actually back themselves off for now. We've got the Faces Void. Who else is mecha mechanism complete? Lycanthrope has his. Uh, Almost has a Necronomicon completed, and they're gonna be going for this guy. No escape. Chrono actually up on the Viper up on Cake so that they can focus down the Klinks. Klinks actually gets himself away. Viper strike up on Quaifa, and nobody dying yet. That's a waste of Chronosphere on the side of Mouse Boards, and that will be actually good for tactical mistakes. Maybe they can get something going here. Maybe they can get something in return. Trouble though. Trouble though. Hello, supports. Bye, supports. OD. Triple kill. Pass in some trouble. Getting bashed going down. It is gonna be three heroes on the run for Mouse Sports as they still lost the OD. And Fada, Quigfa, and Blister are gonna be getting them themselves out. We are gonna be seeing if Kunka gets himself a kill. X marks the spot. They get Faceless Void. They get Faceless Void. And that is three heroes down for just two. I said two supports, but actually Necrolite was the one that died. Klinks actually... Yeah, Klinks died. That was the one. It's three for three. Klinks bought back, actually. So that is the reason why I said two supports going down. That was just the Eclipse that got just dropped down. And, you know, that's the difference in level alone that that gets that going. So, no real surprise there. Still pretty good fight from Tactical Mistakes. And the, if... They can hold this on for a long time. They will be in a better and better position up until the point where Faces Void decides, you know what, it's time for me to get carry items because then they're in, out of, you know, further into the woods. I don't know how that saying goes exactly, but you know what I mean. It's all that matters. So uh, we went over the radiant items. Let's take a look at the dire items because we already saw black going for the f for staff and the double null talismans. But you know, I've also picked up a rod of ethos, uh, an item that you ov often get on the OD. Massive amount of intellect and of course that slow sixty percent pretty damn big. So again, disables hard to come by in this kind of mode and pretty good as well. The only thing that they kind of lack is that is that vision, but that's why they had the uh, the sentry up right there to see if they can catch out the Kunkka, but they couldn't. Quick find in the meantime, having his mount to stall up, we already saw that earlier I believe, so it's gonna be just going for the anti-mage build. I mean, we're gonna maybe see a hard, maybe an MKB to deal with the Phantom Assassin's Blur, who has actually picked up a Hyperstone. As uh, we're going to be seeing Fada going for uh, Sanj and Yasha, perhaps, which is actually nice because a Razor is a fast hero on itself. Sanj and Yasha will make him even faster, able to chase better, able to have the static link up longer. But I wouldn't be all too surprised to see a Heaven's Halberd, but I, I kind of hope that it's going to be Sanj and Yasha. But a Heaven's Halberd would be nice against the PA. If she is indeed going to be too big of a problem, then a Heaven's Halberd to disarm her would be a very big help. As uh, we're going to be seeing Roshan being attempted again by Pass. I say attempted because it looks like Tactical Mistakes is knowing that something is going on. Chronosphere is actually going to lock in the Kunkka and they're going to be able to bring him down. And that all of a sudden is going to be the aggression that uh, the Radiant team wanted to do. It's going to be all gone because they can't really go in with this without the Kunkka. Kunkka comes back though. He buys back. Is he going to be fast enough? They're not trying to go for Roshan again. And maybe they're just trying to waste the time of Tactical Mistakes. Thinking, you know what, we gotta buy back out of that, and let's be happy and back off. Can't really afford to lose more fights. Kling's gonna be finding black. He can't really do that stuff by himself, though. He needs help. So he just needs a vision. He just needs to, his opponents to know where, where they are. Oh, his allies to know where they are, actually. There goes x Mark. The spot Torrance is gonna be there as well, and that's gonna be black getting picked off. Hello, crit. 729. Was well, the number of the crit that Soyon got out of that one, and the tier 2 tower is gonna be the one to pay for it, or at least to be the reward for it. Most is gonna pay for it, it is gonna be Kunkka that gets the gold. And they are actually thinking about pushing on without the OD. They might have a chance. No Eclipse, that Eclipse is devastating for their support. And they're gonna go for this. In the meantime, on the top lane, though, we still have the same situation Quick Fire split pushing. But they know that they can't kill him off just yet, so they're just gonna try to push from themselves. Let's see what kind of a trade it's gonna be. Fortification for the Radiant is still there. Fortification for the Dire is almost there again. They need to pick up the melee racks before that goes up. Antime still got the tier 3 tower down. Here comes the Chronosphere, perhaps no. 29 seconds cooldown. Bash are gonna be stopping Cakes from this from getting away. And the barracks are gonna keep standing. Kaling's going down, giving his life for that. In the meantime, Koifa getting the melee racks. I might even get the range racks. Gets a boat. 
Torrent is gonna miss, but he wants to stay. He has got a man style again in one second. We'll be able to pop it and get the racks. Blink himself away, TP himself out is what he does, and that is gonna be an unfair trade for tactical mistakes, or at least not the trade that they were hoping for. Viper actually still died there as well. Um, wanted to just get the racks, can't get the racks. Lost racks. Got only tier 3 town return for that one, and that is going to be Mouse Sports once again back on top of that imaginary horse. We've got them them being 10k gold in their favor, so we know that they are ahead. It is just tactical mistakes, can definitely still fight back as we saw. The split push right now is a bit too much though, with the experience graph of course also going the way of Mouse Sports around to 7k. It's going to be the difference there. It looks like we might be seeing a game 3 getting forced out because so far... I'm not sure if this is something that Tactical Mistakes can really come back for. They need their 5 man to push, they need their 5 man to fight. They don't have that big of a split push capability as Mouseport has. So this is going to be really tough for them. In the meantime the tier 3 mid was still gone. So that's going to be an easy opening for Mouseports again to start pushing. And this time they will have Quickfire with that and he has a heart. So this is do it or die and Quickfire he doesn't care about anything, he just goes. He just goes for those racks, knowing that there's no fortification. Plus, actually going for the buildings. This is how ballsy he thinks he is. Might as well. Melee racks going down. Wolf form being popped. Wants to go for the Viper, just forcing him back. In the meantime, ranged racks are going to be uh, the ones to take the fall. And there goes the Chrono. Oh my god, that's a four man Chrono. That is already three of the four down, and that's going to be four with only. One leftover killing is gonna be the one to die or one to be able to run away towards his base because they don't see him. But the GG is called. Mouse Sports take game number two and force out a game number three against Tactical Mistakes for the semi finals of the ATO. ATO D3. There we go. Reverse Captain's Mode Dota. That's why we're watching people and we're gonna be watching another game of it. And we're gonna be seeing how that game is gonna go. If Mouse Sports can indeed make it a 2 1, or if Texaco Mistakes is gonna be getting a 2 1. Of course, we're watching the number 2 of the European group taking on number 1 of the Group Americas for the group stages for the ATO D3. Which one is gonna be victorious? We'll find out next. Stick around. More Dota or more ATOD coming up, I should say. If you want to support me, you can check out my website, cheevergaming.com, where you can find all the games of today and tomorrow, and who's gonna cast it. And more importantly, you can find all the VODs of all the casters, of all the games, of all the tournaments in the archive. So check that out for sure, and we are gonna be jumping ourselves into game number three. Don't go anywhere, more Dota 2 coming your way in just a moment.